Hi, and welcome to SF Live. I'm your host, Christina Marie Flores. Okay, in San Francisco, did you know that there are 5,700 homeless children ages 12 to 24 every year. They're homeless or at risk for being homeless. Well, the group that's represented today, Larkin Street Youth Services, helps over 3,500 of those children every year. Uh, they help them with shelter, with meals, with education, and with housing. Uh, please help me welcome tonight Sherilyn Adams, the executive director, as well as Jonas, a client and an intern for Larkin Street Youth Services. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Sherilyn, uh, tell me a little bit, an overview of what it is that Larkin Street does. So Larkin Street Youth Services provides a continuum of services for youth ages 12 to 24, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. all of whom are homeless or are at risk for being homeless. So that includes emergency housing or shelters, housing programs, education and employment programs, and other supportive services to help youth reach their full potential mm -hmm. and to be able to exit street life permanently. Now it started because of children in the Polk Gulch area, is that? That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. So this is our 25th year. Congratulations. Thank you. We're having a, a big birthday year. Uh -huh. um, and it did start. It started a, a group of church folks, actually Old First Church, became concerned about seeing very young teenagers that were on the streets um, and were uh, forced to uh, exploit themselves in some kind of way, were in harm's way, didn't have access to food or clothing. And so started a drop-in program for them in their basement. And since that beginning 25 years ago we have now grown into 25 different programs across 13 different sites in San Francisco and and um, and our beginning started uh, we started seeing kids that were 13 to 18 and now we see kids that are 13 to 24. A lot of people think that there are kids that just were running away from home and didn't want to be in home and that they were bad kids or kids that got involved in drugs and doing this on purpose. Is there is that a myth? Is yeah, that Yeah, I think it's a pretty common myth that people have that 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 teenagers ran away from home, ran away from a great home, and they were just looking for some kind of excitement, or they were bad kids, and and um, something they got kicked out. And certainly, some kids maybe left for an adventure. Maybe some kids were having conflicts at home. In fact, a lot of teenagers probably were having conflicts at home. Mm -hmm. But if you're having a little conflict at home, or you go off for an adventure, you go back home. So the truth is, the kids that we see at Larkin Street are youth who are on the streets, usually for through no fault of their own. Either mm -hmm. their homes weren't safe, or their communities weren't safe, there wasn't a stable family to go back to, or relatives to go back to, or they ended up in the foster care system, and so they are either aging out of that foster care system mm -hmm. without a place to go, or or were having problems once they were in the foster care system and didn't have a place to go or were running away from a group home. So really Larkin Street is about trying to, for the kids under 18, uh, working with them to return them to family if that's possible, to helping them resolve whatever might be going on mm -hmm. for them at their group home or in their foster care home so that they can find a more permanent solution. Or we do have a couple of, of programs for youth that are under age uh, under 18, both a shelter and a, and a housing program. Mm -hmm. And then for youth that are 18 to 24, it's about we can put them in a housing program, we can get them hooked up with education and employment services and help them to build the skills that they need to be able to be successful. Because yeah, this is a tough market for housing as well as jobs. That's right. And uh, Jonas, you work as an intern now. You were a client before. Um, what kind of stories do you see from kids that you help why they ended up where they were before they found Larkin Street? Well, I'm still a client, mm -hmm. um, but in my internship I've been able you know, to meet these people who are they're homeless because either their families aren't accepting or there are no jobs you know at their where their family of origin is currently living mm -hmm. um, or they've been simply thrown out of their houses most recently I have been interacting with someone who left because um, his father is a conservative Southern Baptist preacher and was not accept you know was not accepting exactly like you said of him coming out mm -hmm. so he came to San Francisco <coughs> with the hopes of being able to access services and um, get in an environment that would be accepting and healthy for them. And if Larkin Street were not there, what are the options for these kids? There's, there's very little um, support other than Larkin Street within San Francisco, specifically for uh, trans um, transitional aged youth. Mm -hmm. So aside from Larkin Street, um, you know, he was sleeping in Dolores Park. What are the programs, um, Sherilyn, that your program offers? We offer, I think, a variety of programs. Um, 
we have the housing program so youth can actually stay with us for 18 to 24 months to build the skills they need. Mm -hmm. So whether that's budgeting, cooking, uh, getting a job, finishing their education, addressing maybe some underlying mental health or substance abuse issues mm -hmm. that have um, impacted their ability to be stable or to maintain their housing. Mm -hmm. Um, we also do a lot of work around um, building solid, good peer relationships, learning to get along with others, potentially reconnecting with family or relatives is another part of what we do at Larkin Street. Mm -hmm. We have health clinics. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, excuse me, so through a partnership with the Department of Public Health, folks can get primary medical care. We, had a, we have a set of services for folks that are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. For the youth that we work with that are 18 to 24, mm -hmm. or youth that can't return home, if they stay in our transitional living programs and they complete those programs as well as our education and employment programs, then we see a 74% success rate in terms of being able to exit street life. 74%. That's, That's right. amazing. Yeah. Must be yeah. very proud. Yeah, I think it's you know I think it's all about the youth and their resilience and their ability to take advantage of services and about the staff and about the support of the other community providers that we have in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I think like Jonas said, San Francisco does currently have a good set of services um, in the city for folks and you know, there's always more need than there is services, but we do work with a lot of complementary partners to be able to ensure that youth can um, have access to all the things that they need. Mm -hmm. I feel as a client that Larkin has really established this great continuum of care and that it's all culturally competent. The people who staff the programs are the same people who access the programs. You see yourself reflected <laughs> and the people who are assisting you with housing and the people who are helping you to get your GED or apply to college, everyone is so relatable and the programs are designed in a way that it's so easy to follow along with them and it's so easy to rise up from the situation that you started from mm -hmm. and be able to leave as, you know, living in a stable environment. Mm -hmm. I, it, it seems really hard for me that anyone could really follow the program and then have to go back to street life. Mm -hmm. And is it hard when you, here's a question, mm -hmm. how do you solicit and bring the, the kids to Larkin Street? Do they know about it? Do you hand out flyers? Do you actually go into the areas mm -hmm. where the kids mm -hmm. are? How is that done? So we, um, we do have outreach staff, outreach workers and volunteers who do, um, who do spend time on the streets, in mm -hmm. the park, places where we think homeless youth are or we know homeless youth are. Mm -hmm. uh, and work hard to be able to bring them into one of our drop-in centers, either in the Hate or our drop-in center in the Tenderloin, and then begin to engage them in services, maybe get them hooked up with either medical care, education, employment, or get them into one of the housing programs. Mm -hmm. The most common way that young people find out about Larkin Street is through other young people. Word so it's mouth. people uh -huh. like Jonas who who talk about what they've learned at Larkin Street or what they got from Larkin Street or through his contacts being able to reach out to other young people who may need help. Mm -hmm. And how did you hear about it? Do you remember? Yeah, I heard about Larkin Street. I initially came to San Francisco and was staying uh, with another nonprofit. And the um, case manager there said, you know, Larkin Street seems like it would be a much better fit for you. Mm -hmm. um, slid me in for an interview with the Castro Youth Housing Initiative. Mm -hmm. And in a few weeks, I had a spot. And it's been amazing. Every time I turn around, these programs completely surprise me. Um, I, sometimes I, I really don't believe that it's happening, mm -hmm. um, but it's great. It's, it's stable and it's giving me a place where I can, I can relax for a minute and I can figure out where I want to go with my life and what I want to be doing and then make a plan to get there. And it's just such a supportive environment that there's 10 people mm -hmm. cheering you along the way the whole time. It's great. And how amazing is it that you were helped by this and now you get to help other youth, uh, your peers, you know, come from a situation that you can talk knowledgeably about because that's where you came from as well. It's really rewarding. It's so nice to see that, you know, the young man I spoke of earlier mm -hmm. was sleeping in the park and now he's um, at Larkin, the homeless shelter that Larkin runs, and he's doing great. He's in a job readiness class and he's you know, actively seeking employment. He's much better off than he was when I met him a few weeks ago. So. Mm -hmm. It's really rewarding.